Food and Beverage Magazine Live, bringing food and beverage to life with your hosts, James Beard Award winner Jennifer English and Food and Beverage Magazine publisher Michael Politz. Featuring leaders in the hospitality, branded food and beverage, and CPG industries, many of whom are Jennifer and Michael's friends in the business. For an informal and informative conversation where friends in the business share the latest intel, ideas, and best practices. Live, juicy inside scoop from the tastemakers, newsmakers, bread bakers, drink shakers, spoon lickers, clam diggers, farms, foodies, and friends of the food and beverage magazine world. Here are your hosts, Jennifer English and Michael Politz. Oh my God, you're so far away. Because we're cooking today. We are? Well, we have a very special show today because we're actually in the kitchens at the Food Beverage Magazine Test Kitchen. And we're going to be making something extraordinary with some people who are not only succeeding, thriving, and pivoting in what was once their side hustle. They are going to come and they're going to teach us how any business can evaluate what they're doing, where their passion is, and where the future might call them to go. How we can reignite our passions. How we can re spark is the word you like to use. You usually type it out for me. We're going to talk to the amazing team at Truffle Shuffle. These are some what? friends. You never even Paul. introduced yourself. Let's introduce yourself. You're so excited. You forgot who you are. I am. I know. I forgot who I am. Do you know this girl, Barbara Frey Glover? You met her at 10 West. Hey, who are you? Is that a shoe store? What is that, 10 West? No, 10 West is, uh, it's like the... Um, it's like the Burning Man of Tucson. It's like Burning Man and Austin City Limits. And, you know, it's like all these great festivals rolled into one. It's like 20 days of, you know, Agave Heritage Festival and arts and TED Talks and cooking. And anyway. All right, let's go back. Look at this. I got a pointer, truffle shuffle. Oh, did I say truffle shuffle? You did. He's, t he's tickling his camera. I'm watching him backstage. Very interesting. These chefs are a little like cookie, but that's okay. You know what? Go no, ahead. not. You know what they are? They mm -hmm. understand that the reason we share meals and search for things that are irresistible is because they know through a career built on a fundamental principle of excellence and irresistible, training at some of the best Michelin starred restaurants in the world, joining together at the incomparable French laundry where the chefs and Sarah at the front of the house dreamed of how they might be able to take one of the things that they grew to love. And I don't want to tell their story, but of course it involves truffles. And we're going to bring the people who are considered to be some of the most um, trustworthy truffle merchants in the world. And it turns out that truffles, like anything rare and valuable, have its share of fakes and frauds. You got to go to a, a, a reliable merchant. You got to go to a, an utterly inscrutable member uh, and merchant. That's what you have to do when you want truffles. You go to the best for the best, and you know you got to trust who you're going to. And so, not only we found you the source for the greatest truffles you can find in North America, and we're going to find out: do they even come from North America? Or do they can I talk? Can I talk about truffles for a minute? I wish you would. I love truffles. I fell in love with truffles years ago. There used to be, I don't know if it's still even happens, this great truffle auction. Are they, where are they? Are they in France? Is that where that comes out of? Where they send the pig dogs out and they find the truffles. So every year living in Vegas, there would be a, a there would be a truffle auction around the world, right? We, we would have, who was there? So I went, it was me, it was a big auction and there were different people in different parts of the world. It was a televised auction. I was with Piero Savaggio, Robin Leach. I think Wolfgang actually may have been in France or in Italy or somewhere. Wolfgang Puck may have been. And everybody was like looped in by teleconference. I mean, it was teleconference back then, right? It wasn't. This is early 2000s. And we would have all these. So Valentino Restaurant, as everyone knows from Santa Monica, was in Vegas. The most delicious Italian restaurant in the world. We would have all these truffle dishes created by Luciano Pellegrini, James Beard Award winner, right? 
So we were, we were just gou gorging ourselves on truffle dishes while people were buying truffles this big and all these chefs all over the world were buying things. And it was, For it was literally tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes, it was highly expensive. Um, and, and over the years, it's become more attainable, right? The flavoring has been more attainable because they were just experimenting with truffle oils back then and white truffle oil was just coming out and all those things, right? Well, I'm going to ask the hard question, Michael, because you're a connoisseur. You're in Las Vegas. The world's great chefs are all there. They've all got restaurants and operations there. Do you think truffles are better expressed and celebrated in French cuisine or Italian cuisine or another cuisine? What do you think? Well, it's weird because now we're starting to see it everywhere, aren't we? So I thought at first Italian, right? Like I would always be like, oh, you know, slice those truffles on top of my pasta, right? Put them on this, put them on that. But now people are cooking them, they're using them. Let's, let's find out what they do with the French. And, and, I, and I, while I love a fantastic, impeccable terrine of foie gras with truffle, I okay. love the way truffles come to life in Italian cuisine. When hard pressed, would I choose French or Italian? I might choose Italian in part because I think I can also more accessibly execute that cuisine. And well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Danielle Ballou and Hubert Keller both have truffle burgers on their menu. I know, I know. Right? So, I, and, I've, and they've made them, they're delicious. All right, let's get the truffle shuffle guys on. Um, you know but, them. And before we get them on, what I'm gonna show you is, what I have here is a box that arrived this morning in perfect, actually arrived yesterday, it arrived in perfect condition. And the instructions called for me to take one of the ingredients and do something overnight to it. But I left the rest of the ingredients and we're gonna unbox the ingredients. When you go to Truffle Shuffle to order a meal kit that includes these rare truffles, it comes with impeccable directions, which we're gonna share with you today all the ingredients you need to make a meal. It gives you a list of the tools that you'll need to make your mise en place, which is mm. everything sort of prepared, portioned, and ready to go. Can and you say that again? Can you say that again? Can you say mise en place again? You're gonna tease me because I, I don't speak French well. You do speak French well. So so let's go to a real quick break and then we'll bring on the truffle shuffle. Oh, you got it. Whether you are thinking about becoming a restaurateur or you are already in the business, Michael Politz has written a must read, The Food and Beverage Magazine's Guide to Restaurant Success. Pick up your copy today at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Books A Million, or wherever fine books are sold. Okay, Jennifer, we're always gonna take that break. We're gonna take that break. And All right, here we go. I've got my water on the stove boiling. It's the simmer right now. And so when we make the gnocchi that we're gonna make from scratch, which I'm really excited about, and then we're gonna dress them in this beautiful butter that's melted already in a big pan that's gonna absorb the flavor of some thyme temperature and some sage. And I just needed to show you because- Did we're you tear up the sheets? I see you're boiling water. Did you tear up the sheets? No, no babies. But I've got beautiful sage. But we've also got a remarkable guest. Michael, will you do the honors? I don't even know his name. What? Yeah, I don't know his name. I let you do I come in blind on purpose. I have my, on my screen and I'm so far away I can't see it. Oh so you God. don't even know his name? I think it's Aaron. I, I think his name is Aaron. What I up, I, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Look how close and cute you are. Hang on, I got I have to be so close. Don't look at me. I should turn my camera off. Why don't we just say, hey, you, let's call him. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, here's yeah. where guys are good. Guys go, dude, we just call each other dude. We don't have to know each other's name, right, bro? Right. But it's Jason Kinney, right? Jason. Jason. Yeah, it's, Jason. it's Jason, and you know the girl's name. And, and Sarah King. Yeah, you knew that already. You knew oh, Sarah yeah, because yeah. you've been hawking her during pre show. I know. But she's amazing, and I'm so excited to have these guys here because one of the things that has happened is we have become, well, we've fallen in love with truffles. And it's part of the story that we're going to tell today. Jason is one of the chefs and co-founders of Truffle Shuffle. He joins us now from the Truffle Shuffle Kitchens in beautiful California where we are live. Jason, welcome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. 
And Michael, it is awesome to be here with you today. Excited to make some truffle ricotta gnocchi. Are you okay that we forgot your name, Jason? No, it's not that I forgot. I, I didn't have my note in front of me, and I apologize. That's my being nervous. Are you, you got, nervous for Jason? Because he's got such high, if you look at his resume, it's pretty intense. I mean, let's go through that. I may have a James Beard Award, but I couldn't work one minute in a Thomas Keller kitchen. You have to you know, be the best, this, the best of the best. And I'm new, nervous today, I gotta be honest. In this new virtual world, it, uh, you know, you get into a routine, whether it's the kitchen or life, and you get to know the people that you know, but then in this virtual world, you know, like the, the Rolodex of names that you have to remember just does not stop increasing. Well, and so we appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. Uh, Jason, I, I wanna talk to you a little bit about, about this time and place, because just a few months ago, Truffle Shuffle existed, but not like this. Take us back to the days when you all, three partners from Truffle Shuffle met, where you met, and what your food existence was at that time. Absolutely. And so, you know, we got a pretty cool story that I'm always uh, proud to share. And so we all met while working together at the French Laundry. And so it's myself, it's my wife, Sarah, and then Tyler is our other partner in this. And so Tyler was a sous chef at the restaurant. I started there about a year after he did. And then Sarah came about two or three years after the both of us. And so we all met while working together at the French Laundry and ultimately started Truffle Shuffle through our love of truffles. And mainly- So hold on a minute, Jason, hold on, Jason. So you were there, you hadn't met Sarah yet, right? Right. So when you when she walked in the door to work the first day, what happened? Because you married her. So did you look at that girl and say, "Hey, I'm going to marry that girl." Like, yes. Tell, me, tell us the story. We yes. viewers want to know what's happening. What happened? Yeah, honestly, she. Uh, it was. There's a couple of days of the week where it was a Monday, Tuesday, right? And so the the chef de cuisine was out, and she came in for a stage, and so Tyler was running the pass. Ian was on canopy. I was working the fish station. And when a uh, front of the house person would come in on a stage, they would stand not in the corner, but like to the back behind the food runners, you know, and I'm just working and I look up and there she is. And I was like, whoa. And you could always tell when someone was staging because they, they weren't in uniform, you know? And so she staged one day. And then normally if people got a job, they would start about a week or two later. Right. And right. so she staged, and honestly, she was there. Tyler looked at me and was like, well, there we go, Jay. And I was like, yeah, I know. And then she staged, and then it took her about a month or two to actually start. And about three weeks into it, I was like, man, I wonder if that girl's ever gonna, ever gonna take a job here, you know? And then all of a sudden she showed up one day and I convinced myself after like, it was like after like four days, I was like, either today I ask her out or I'm gonna hate myself forever. And then I did, and we hung out, and I've been together ever since. Jen, how, do you, how do you feel about that love? I mean, that's called love in the kitchen, right? You know, when I was younger, did I, I used to get jobs just to meet girls. Like, that's the way you do it. See, Jennifer, you didn't know what guys really do. They get jobs just to meet girls. And now he married her, and they started a hustle. And now they're doing great. Look at, see what happens? Hustle mm -hmm. turned into a shuffle. See what I'm saying? Listen, we're going to run out of time. We're already chewing into our, into our cooking time. And I wanted to say that one of the reasons why this is such a, a credible business is because when you, Jason, when you talk about the French Laundry standard and how Thomas Keller and his commitment to young people and excellence really um, can be seen in everything from the U.S. Boku's door success to yeah. just an amuse bouche at a luncheon service at the French Laundry. He's got something special and he teaches it generously and it empowers you all to do what you do. Will you tell that part of the story? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the French Laundry is such a special place because not just the standard, but because of the volume that you do, Yeah. right? You do on dinner, you do 90 covers on lunch, you do 60 covers. Right. And with that volume, with that level of volume, you're handling an exponential more amount of ingredients than you would at your standard three Michelin star restaurant. And so I was the fish butcher 
for over a year, right? And every single day I checked in all the oysters, caviar, lobster, all the fish, right? And at a place like that, you really learn how to take care of ingredients. And those small things on how to properly store fish, right, translate into everything that you do at the restaurant. How you properly put the cleaning supplies away, how you properly wipe down your station, how you properly sear the fish, you know? And we've kind of taken that into this business into, okay, how do we build this business? How do we build this business properly? How do we treat our customers right? But then now at a point where we're also, we take that that uh, sense of urgency and we've been able to grow this business rather quickly while still maintaining that care for the guests. And I wanna translate that, Michael, because we've said this on the show before, when you're at that level of excellence, how you do anything is how you do everything. And how in a house like the French Laundry, where there is no detail too small to get the utmost attention, we can mm -hmm. learn so much. So that when you go to a moment when we are all in crisis, when we're all confronted with businesses shutting down all around us with a, a, a glimpse of the future that is cloudy at best, if you have a solid foundation, like Truffle Shuffle did, you could do the things necessary to be inspired and to pivot and to scale nearly immediately. And that's kind of the story of why we wanted them on today. Yeah, we wanted to show you how great and easy these kinds of meal kits are because in a way, Truffle Shuffle, well, they represent almost every company and restaurant and, and team that has dreamed of doing a meal kit. I just think these guys do it better than just about anybody else. And that's why we're actually making it. But more importantly, I think their story and their advice and the things they have to share are the things that every operator at every level can take and incorporate into what they go and do next. But the most important thing is that it inspires a next. Absolutely. And if you want, Jennifer, we could uh, start making the Noki and then I can kind of tell you that pivotal day for us where you know, literally there was one day, one decision that if we didn't make the right decision that day, we would have been out of business on yeah. March 29th. So let's, first of all, let's go through the box because for one money, you order these online, you have several different kits or meals and mm -hmm. you have different, Every and by the way, I should say, um, I should do full disclosure. I've had the great honor and privilege of spending some time at the French Laundry. Um, and while I haven't been in the post-fire kitchen, I had been in the, the pre-fire kitchen and then the temporary dig. So I, I want to say that um, I have a little bit of familiarity, and I don't know how your timing overlaps. But what I can say is I almost – it doesn't matter whether it was the pre-fire or post-fire kitchen. I'm, I've, been, I've been told and understand from pictures and videos that it's even better than it ever was, and it was – at the world's best level to begin with. So we're dealing with the best of the best. And so I wanted to have you take us through when you order from Truffle Shuffle, that kind of um, approach that you brought to the ingredients that we're gonna start taking out of the box. The one thing I did before we started is I took the ricotta and I've drained it like you instructed overnight. That's just the only thing that you need to give a little bit of time for. So talk a little bit about how you constructed the kit and what we're gonna take out of this box here. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, what we have here and the, the very simple idea, right, is in the middle of COVID-19 when nobody can go out to a restaurant, right, and everybody's at home, I think initially everybody just stocked up on whatever they could, hot dogs, macaroni. And so when we launched this, well, we, we just wanted to build a experience for people once they kind of ran out of those supplies and wanted to have a nice meal, similar to what they have in a restaurant. And so when you work at a restaurant like the French Laundry or any Michelin rated restaurant or any kitchen in, for that matter, right? What you do as you're learning is you, as a young chef, you mise out the recipe and you take that to an older chef and you make it step-by-step step with that chef, right? And so what we have here is all of the ingredients mised out for a lemon ricotta gnocchi. So we have our Parmesan, right? We have our butter that comes from a local dairy. So literally, you've portioned out for me 
and it's sealed in a no-touch way. So for people who are concerned about how is this handled and, and do I need to rinse everything or wipe everything that comes out of the box, uh, you've got everything sealed and pre-portioned safely. Yes, ma'am. So we've got a, a hunk of the, I'm gonna assume this is the Reggiano Parmigiano. We've got a, a gorgeous interior tenderloin chunk of this. Um, which Parmesan do you choose? So we get all of our Parmesan from Emilia Romanara. And are we using an Ace Trevecchio or are we using a particular, what's your favorite? Uh, we like the, when you look at the Parmesan, all of the stuff that we get from here, we try to get just from the center. And then we actually have like a, almost a hundred pounds of just the rinds wow. saved up right now that we're going to be doing a black truffle soup with Parmesan stock later on in July. All right. So let's keep going. Because honestly, for me, I have to tell you, I'm both a little bit nervous and I'm terribly excited. Yesterday was my birthday and it feels like Christmas morning all rolled into one. Well, happy birthday and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Jingle bells. Let's keep going. What have I got in here? Because I, I, I can't wait. Excellent. And so you got the Parmesan. We got the flour. We have our butter. And again, it's portioned out. Mm -hmm. We got then, the, is this a butter you make in house or is this a special butter you like to use for this purpose? So we use all clover dairy. And what's really cool about these kits is when we first started this for NorCal, we were the largest purchase order for clover dairy, Newport meat company, Tabala spade cheese company. Cause literally we were moving volume that uh, normally would go to all these restaurants, but in the middle of this pandemic, everything was shut down. And so yeah. we, we were able to work directly with all these local purveyors and help them move just a, a serious amount of volume of their product. And these gorgeous egg yolks. Mm -hmm. Perfect then, piece of sage. Yep, and that's coming from a rooftop farm in Berkeley. I got my lemon tea towel out for this today. We've got a beautiful lemon. The recipe says a Meyer lemon. And when we get something that might include an ingredient we haven't been able to find or buy otherwise, or maybe never even worked with before, you know, what's kind of fun about this is we get to discover things. So tell everybody what's the difference between a regular lemon and a Meyer lemon, maybe performance wise or taste wise. Yeah. So Meyer lemons are a cross between uh, a lemon and an orange and the uh, Meyer lemons, you're able to use more of the juice of them in finishing sauces. So we're going to actually put all the juice of this into the sauce at the end of this recipe. And then last but not least at the tip of the Christmas stocking, the best present of all. What have I got here? So you either have the truffle carpaccio or you got the Bolognese truffle salt. Both are incredible. I've got both. And so the truffle carpaccio right now, we're using all French summer truffles. And what's really cool about this is that normally French summer truffles, uh, kind of the aroma on them, if you just use them fresh, right, is subtle. But we've taken these and poached them in olive oil and made a carpaccio out of it, which makes it very user friendly. We're not having to ship uh, pieces of truffles and shavers and people just take this, put it in the fridge, pull it out, put it in the sauce, and they get that same truffle experience. And then we have our Bolognese truffle salt. And so all the salt actually comes from a single family in Bali that me and Sarah, after we got married, met on our honeymoon. And so- You one Bali? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how cool. Yeah, so we, we, we met the family, loved the salt, and that is actually what inspired us to launch our first product. And now it's a product that Whole Foods picked up, and that's how we got a global deal with Whole Foods. That's so awesome. That is really, really cool. Do you get to cook as much today as you did when you were on one of the lines and stations at French Laundry? You know, we do these classes, and we really make sure that we're a part of all the classes. But the French Laundry, honestly, it was just uh, it was a special place. And you were unbelievably busy. I used to have a Fitbit and every day I would walk 26 miles. And it's a it's just a different type of restaurant that will always have a special place place in anyone's heart that works there. Listen, I absolutely 
Chef Jason, I want to ask you, um, let's get started. Um, one of the things you instructed us to do now that we've got our, our mise uh, in, in place all together, um, we actually took the ricotta cheese and mm -hmm. um, we've drained it in a bowl in the refrigerator in a strainer with a coffee filter overnight. Why would we strain ricotta cheese like this for the, for the gnocchi that we're making? Yeah, so this ricotta, it's Bellwether ricotta. It all comes from uh, Tamales Bay. Absolutely incredible ricotta, but it is a small batch product. And so because of that, um, with it being a small batch product, sometimes some will be really dry, some will be very, very wet. And with this gnocchi, to just ensure that we have dough that we can work with, we just want to get any excess water out of there. And so... The next step that we like to do after you drain it is to actually get it in a tea towel. Yep. Just pick it up with my hands. Get it in a tea towel like I have here. In my hands? I'm going to take it out with my hands, correct? Mm -hmm. I can't see what you're doing. Michael, can we show him? Or are you taking the filter out too? So take the coffee filter out and then get all the ricotta into a tea towel. And then we'll press any excess liquid out. And this is kind of the insurance policy in case it wasn't dry enough. Okay. You know, what's really funny, Jason, is um, I learned how to make gnocchi from Tom's and use his um, salt and baked potato method. Oh, yeah? And they're still some of the most delicious gnocchi I ever had. What a surprise. Yeah, it's very special. Okay. And now, so. Here we are. Well, we like to do then. And so this, this recipe here is Chef Suzette's. She's a two Michelin star chef in San Francisco. And pretty cool. Jennifer, I think you'll like this. Uh, we realized that she is. She is the longest standing Michelin rated chef in America. Female. Female chef in America. She actually had no clue. We, I was like, we we're just chatting about it and we looked it up and uh, yeah. So we, we want to get this ricotta gnocchi as dry as possible. Yeah. And so I just like to dab it with the towel and then basically then we'll get it to a point where we're going to scrape it up and get it in the bowl. Gotcha. And I like to use a bench scraper. Yep. And this with potato gnocchi, when you make it, as you know, you uh, cook the potatoes, right? And then pass them and then make the gnocchi out of it, which is a way of getting the potatoes as dry as possible. Right. And, and again, let's tell people the reason we want to make this mixture as dry as possible is because we're gonna we're gonna actually not make them dry per se. We're gonna actually replace what would have been that liquid with something else. Yeah. So we'll instead of using potato, we'll use the ricotta, and then we'll use egg yolks and parmesan to essentially bind it. And so we'll use egg yolks, parmesan to bind it, and then we'll turn it into an actual dough with the flour. Okay, Michael, would you zoom in on uh, what Chef Jason is doing? Because I want everybody to see what the pros do. Are the eggs going in next, Chef? Yes, ma'am. So we got our ricotta in the bowl, nice and dry. And then we got our egg yolks. And so we're going to make sure we get everything out of this deli. And then I went ahead and typically we'll grate the Parmesan uh, live with the guests, but I went ahead and just got that all grated up. So now we're going to add all the Parmesan to this. And then we'll add a pinch of truffle salt. Jason, do you make the world's greatest popcorn? We actually are launching a truffle kettle kettle corn, oh. and it is unbelievable. Just a pinch, right? Yes, ma'am. 
Yeah. And you'll see if you taste that salt on its own, it has 20% actual truffles, right? The like aroma, the Jason, I've got to compliment you guys. That aroma is just enchanting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, uh, Tyler did the recipe. You know, we, me and Sarah found the salt. Uh, the hunters found the truffles. Tyler put that recipe together, and he did a phenomenal job. So I'm going to just go ahead and write this right into my bowl as well. Yep. And then I'm going to start microplaning or zesting the lemon. And so we just want to zest all the lemon. So, Chef, am I keeping and reserving any of the Parmesan for dressing this at the end or no? No, ma'am. We'll put it all into this dough. Until By the way, you, you weren't ma'am until your birthday yesterday. I'm just saying. I, I wasn't ma'am until I, I got nervous. Well, we'll make sure that we get uh, some fresh truffles out to you for your birthday. <laughs> hey, Jason, while we're, while we're on and we're working, would you tell everybody what truffles are and where the best truffles in the world come from? Yeah, so so the best way I can explain what truffles are, for, let's say someone's never heard of them or they've heard, slightly heard about them. Truffles are a wild, rare type of mushroom. And what's very special about them is that they have to be found by dogs, right? And typically when mushrooms are ripe and ready, they pop up out of the ground. Truffles release an aroma, and then dogs will find them and pick them up and let's say there's no dogs around actually little truffle flies dig into the earth and pick up little pieces of it and take their spores other places for them to continue their cultivation, if you will. And so you have to train a dog for many years to find the truffle, right? And then once you get the truffle, you have five days to move it to ensure that it's used at its height of that ripeness. And so, now, Jason, when we talk about these uh, truffle hunting expeditions, and the truffle hunting dogs. Um, we've heard about pigs hunting for truffles. Uh, and then we know about truffle season. You know, people are excited when it's truffle season. Uh, is it truffle season in the same places in the world where the truffles are found? Uh, or are there different seasons for different kinds of truffles? Yeah, so there's, there's three main types of truffles, right? The ones that you're talking in the beginning for the uh, Alba White Truffle Festival are white truffles. Right, and that's the scientific name there is tuber magnatum. And so you have white truffles, tuber magnatum, and those are in the winter time. So you'll start September, September, October, November, December, right? They just happen to fall right around the holidays, right? Mm -hmm. And then those are the most fragrant, most expensive, most perishable. And typically what people think about when they think about like a, a truffle experience. And then well, you have let me just tell you, Chef, this mixture, which is now golden butter yellow, uh, it's the lemon cake frosting of your dreams color yellow. Uh, yeah. It's rich, the smell, the aroma, uh, the texture. This is one of the most sexy bowls of ingredients I've ever seen in my life. Well, that is an absolutely incredible way to explain it. And thank you very and, much for that. Anybody, Michael, I don't know if, if I even want to compare mine, but um, you have to come and take a look at this mixture. I, I, it really is just incredibly beautiful, light and fluffy. And what it does is it, it hints for us at just how perfect and light and fluffy these gnocchi are going to be. Yeah, they're going to be incredible. And so, Jennifer, what we like to do from here is go ahead and add, once you get it all mixed together yep. and beautiful like you have it, then you'll want to add, half, you'll want to take out a quarter cup of flour for bench flour. And then the rest of the flour in that deli, you'll add half and then half. And so after the white truffles, there's black truffles, right? And the, the typical nickname you hear for those is black Paragord truffles. And uh, those are come from mainly France, right? Mm -hmm. And then close to the Bordeaux region, region of France. But then they started cultivating them in Spain and Australia 
and now Napa. And so right now it is the winter time in Napa. And so I'm going to use about half of this at one time. Say that one more time. So I've taken out my bench flower. I now have my container of the flower that you sent us. And I'm going to ask you about what kind of flower this is. And you said I'm going to use half of it in this mixture or all of it? Yeah, so we like to just start with even maybe just a third or half. And then literally you're just adding enough to it till the dough has a resembles Play-Doh. And so we've learned just, you know, you need enough flour for the dough, but it's not an exact ratio because of the level of liquid that can be in that ricotta. Chef, would you do me a favor and, and tell people, you know, sometimes we rely so heavily on a recipe that we lose the forest for the trees. No mm -hmm. ingredients are ever going to be exactly the same. And that's why we do things like taste and use all our senses in all aspects of everything we cook. Every time we cook, even when chefs from the French Laundry are walking us through the process. This is one of those times where I can have you help me and everybody learn you have to use your relationship and present moment with the ingredients. It's not, it's not, it's technical, but it also requires the science and the art of it. And the art of it, of course, is having that, that sense that maybe you need a little more, a little less. You taste it a little more, a little less. Will you talk about how that's part of how all of us are developing our sense in any kitchen, but particularly our own kitchens. Absolutely. And I think, you know, what we've learned doing these classes and thus far we've actually, we've cooked with uh, 12,000 people since wow. the start of COVID-19 and doing these classes and we do it all live. So all 12,000 people can ask, have had the ability to ask questions. And so we've learned a lot coming from the Navy SEALs realm of the kitchen to you know, working with home chefs. And the main thing that I've learned is that everybody just wants to do it right. They want to do the right thing. They don't want to mess it up. And they just like it better when the recipe says, do this exactly like this and get this result. That way, if it does get messed up, they blame the recipe, you know? And so what we've learned is people just want to do it right. They want to make that beautiful meal for themselves, for the family. And what we have started to do is just kind of talk people through the different scenarios. You know, it's like, it's not necessarily like, like right now, I still have a decent amount of flour here and yeah. my dough, I got, I got all the flour I need into this and I'll, I'll reserve that. And so what, what we've started to do is just kind of talk to people about the different scenarios and just what, what it is you want to look for, you know, like with this and, and then explaining it to people in a manner where they can understand, you know, like, like with this, you, you want this to look like Play-Doh. And once we told people that, they just, you know, they relax. They're like, okay, let me get some more wine. I know what Play-Doh is. I can make this dough look like Play-Doh. And, and mine so, is a little bit like moist Play-Doh. So I might think I need to add maybe just a tiny bit more flour. Yep, absolutely. And it is a it is a moist dough, but uh, the biggest, the uh, great point, the next thing we'll tell people is if you go in there, right, with one hand and you got to pick up all that dough, can you pick it up in one hand or is half, is it going to fall off? And that's kind of another little sign that we're looking for here. Michael, can you zoom in on what chef is teaching us? And we should tell everybody that you've got a couple of videos on YouTube so that if you feel like you want to be inspired and learn this, uh, you can go and watch this recipe as well. But no, Michael, not me. Zoom in on him. I'm not the guru. He is. And which camera are you guys out here? I'm in here. She, uh, Jennifer, go. Jennifer, I want to, the audience is asking, we need to zoom in on Jennifer. I don't know what that means, but people are big fans of yours. So All right, I, well, I'm you're gonna, letting, the, now you're letting them down. Here you go. You want to zoom in? I'll, I'll let you. Oh, let's go zoom in on Jennifer. Now let me, I'm going to do a side by side zoom and let me get me. I think, I think we're pretty close. Mm hmm. I might be a tablespoon of flour away from being done. It's still just a, t a kiss moist, I'm going to say. Because, Chef, it's a bit sticky. Is it supposed to be sticky? The, what I like to look for is if you take two fingers, tap those two fingers onto your little bench flour, and then if you press into it, right, 
does it still stick? And if it doesn't, you're good. If it still sticks after that, then you might need a little bit more flour, but, but it is a sticky dough, right? If I, if I touch it without any flour in my hands, I do get that little bit of stickiness there. Okay. And that's totally fine because what we're going to do is put flour everywhere on the board, on our hands, right? And we'll, we'll get this nice and beautifully rolled out. And Come on, so, Jennifer. The fun's about to start. You're going to dump your flour everywhere. Come on. I want it all over your face. Let's go. And so, Jennifer, what I'd like to do, and this is a little bit different than what we normally do, is actually get this sauce started. Yep. And so typically we go just step by step with everyone, make sure we're successful. But if you go ahead and get your saute pan on low yep. key, and then you're going to put all that butter in there. And then you can bring the sage, truffle salt, truffle carpaccio, and lemon. And kind of it right center. next to your pot. Low battery. Oh. Alert from low battery. I'm getting a low battery message. I'm going to run and get my plug. That is amazing. That low battery alert, Jennifer. I didn't never heard that before. It sounded like a um, like a, a storm alert or something. Well, yeah. really, what's happening is somebody is actually in her kitchen working with her, and it's a robot, so it's not truly. Cool yeah, it's low battery. <laughs> so, how many years did you work at the French Laundry? I was there four years. And how many years did uh, Sarah? Sarah's there a year. Tyler was there five years. Wow. So you were just like, Sarah, I'm going to take you and just get you out of this. I don't want you to have to be here while I'm working hard like this. And is that what happened? Like you became chivalrous. And Yeah, but then I went on to work at two other three-star restaurants. So. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> I, I think, see, we really wanted to have Sarah on today, but they threw, they threw you on, Chase. I don't know why they did that, but they did. I don't know why either, because... Sarah can make this recipe better than anybody now. Ooh. I promise Jennifer, you that. Jennifer's plugging in. I can watch her backstage plugging in and plugging up. And we're going to have this fabulous James Beard Award winner on soon. Oh, okay, wait. I think let's look at this. Look at this face. This is a face. Oh, where'd you go? I loved it when you had your face up in the camera. It was amazing. It was adorable. Look at that, Jen. Jen, we're not going to be on the air the whole time this thing is cooking, are we? I know. I know. We are, we are. Look, so we're making, what are we making? Noki? Noki? Uh, truffle truffle ricotta noki. And so we got a little brown butter sage sauce, and then we got our truffle carpaccio that will go on top of it. Oh, my God. And I, You know, Sarah, I didn't get my box. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like one for our risotto class this Sunday? Maybe. Let me see what's, you know, I've got a three-year-old. It's hard to uh, sit still in a class. All right. Jennifer, how are you back there? You missed the spice. Miss the spice. Are you back? Oh, I'm all back, but I, I need uh, I need Jason to talk me through. So I've got the butter melted in the pan with the with the sage leaves. What else do I need? Mm -hmm. And so we got our dough off to the side right now, and then we got our butter melted, and then you can get all the sage leaves in there, like you said. Yep. Another pinch of truffle salt. Okay. And so now we'll just let that ride on low to medium heat as we start to roll out our dough. So what we're going to do here is take that flour and we're going to flour this entire cutting board. Jeff, did I put my truffle carpaccio in the simmer sauce? So we like to add the truffle carpaccio at the very, very end. Gotcha. And so I'm um, layering this board with flour and then I'm going, going rock climbing. I got a little on my hands as well. And what I think would be best, Jennifer, how many how many people do you have over on your side? Is it just one or you got a couple more people there? We're gonna be we're gonna be four people. Nice. Well if you want we can do uh, let's say a quarter a quarter of this recipe roll it out together and then that way you'll have the dough and you can make that for the rest of everybody okay great perfect so now we got all of our dough out it's going right onto that floured surface yep. and this is the part where you're going to be like wow i had no idea that no key could be this easy and so 
I'll talk to you through this real quick and then I'll tell you the story of the fateful day in our company's history that really changed everything. And, so, and I'm going to describe that what you and I have in front of us is probably a five or six inch round um, dough that is about an inch and an inch and a quarter uh, thick, maybe an inch and a half thick. Yep, exactly. And so um, we got that there. And then actually what we're going to do is we'll do a six. So we're going to cut it in half. And then we're going to cut that one of those. We're going to cut that half into thirds. And then you, well, you're, you have kind of a little quiche. It also has like scone. Scone sized pieces. And then we'll just start with one. And so you'll see once you get a little bit of flour on it, even though it's a wet dough, it uh, starts starts working just like play dough would, right? And so I also have to I have to note, Chef, this is to the touch. This is very soft. Yes. And so from here we have our five pieces in front of us, and then we got one piece right. Now we're going to start working with and what we do here very simple it's just with one hand we'll start working it back and forth and then you'll start applying a little bit of pressure to it and what we found works best is you'll once you start applying that pressure and it gets bigger than one hand then you'll go in with two hands and as i'm doing this i'm just stirring this brown butter sage sauce every once in a while watching it and once that smells exactly like toast in the morning it'll be ready and so now i got two hands on this right and i'm gonna take one second make sure my water's up to a boil a bone excellent and so now we're going to roll these guys out and what we're looking for is knuckle sized pieces and so we're going to roll this out so it's about a half inch in diameter and my sauce is getting pretty close here and so your sauce should be yep. pretty close and as I well tell you, i was lucky enough one time to be invited to a ducal palace in genoa italy and the most memorable bite of that entire trip was a single leaf of perfectly fried steak from and that's Crow. exactly what it smells like the number one stock to Incredible. buy and that's awesome, and I love that. I love. Oh, hold on, Chase. We're getting a stock tip from her phone. What What was the number one stock to buy, Jennifer? Apple. <laughs> Gee, not from Google Chrome. But that's, that's not why Tesla. Fancy people can can get all these tips. All right. So. Perfect. So I'm, my brown butter sage sauce is there, so I'm turning it off. So once you turn the heat off, then you can add all the truffles to it, right? And then what we tell people is just add all the truffles and then stir this around as touch. And then we're gonna squeeze in. That's incredible. Squeeze in that lemon. To the butter and the truffles. Yep, once the heat is off. And we like to do the lemon after the truffles. That way the pan isn't so hot anymore. All right, so right now I got my sauce done. I got one log right here. And let me know how is your log looking, Jennifer? Let me know when it's a good time, and I'll show you the, the best size to start cutting these guys. Yep, I think I'm ready. Perfect. So what we're looking for here is one knuckle. And so you can kind of measure that and then go through. And we just mainly want beautiful, consistent pieces. And so we've been doing this recipe with families 
friends, kids. Uh, it's just so cool people make this and then how blown away they are that they uh, were able to make Noki. Chef, you know, you've brought a restaurant experience into someone's home, but you've done something more than that. When you were conceiving of Truffle Shuffle, did you imagine all the things that have happened in the relationship you experience with your guests and students as they make this and succeed in it? Could you have conceived of what this was becoming? Was that your intention? Could you have dreamed a dream as big as what the success looks like and how inspired people have been and become? Absolutely no. We started, honestly, it was uh, the, as simple of a business plan as go to Italy, find truffles, find an honest truffle hunter, or bring those truffles back, start selling them. And that was 2018. And then uh, we and we started this business at the end of 2018, and we did over 100,000 in the first uh, 90 days. And we're- So I've got them cut, but that's not the end of the process, is it? Nope. And so once we get it cut, then what we want to do is I got a little tray right here. So I just lightly floured that tray. And so- once you get it nice and lightly floured, then we're going to put the gnocchi onto the tray. And this is how we'll, normally you would get everything rolled out, right? And then we blanch everything at one time. But here, we're going to take this. I'm going to blanch this off. This will give us about one nice portion. And then I'm going to take uh, three-fourths of the sauce out. That way... We can show you guys what a typical portion would look like. Now, what about this wine glass technique? What am I going to do with this wine glass? You know, that's one of Chef Suzette's uh, famous techniques, and she's got a name for it. And essentially what she says is that if you take the gnocchi from this point, you can put it into a wine glass and roll it around, and it gives it a corkscrew-like effect. There, she's got it. And I'm doing it right like this. Yeah, incredible. And it gives you a really little gnocchi. Like a little football. Jen, uh, Jen, we have a ton of viewers right now. Why don't you read and announce Jason? Tell everybody a little background on him. Because well, they're coming in, Nate. They're coming in hot strong right now. Strong. That's because we're about to the truffles. They can smell them. They can smell the truffles. They can smell the truffles through the computer. We are here. This is Food and Beverage Magazine live in the test kitchens with our good friends at Truffle Shuffle, a team of entrepreneurs who have taken their passion and their original side hustle born of just a true love from something that they discovered while working at the French Laundry in California for Chef Thomas Keller and his incredible James Spirit Award winning team. And I will always personally have the most respect for Thomas because among other things, he's a, he's a good guy, but, but he, he committed to making the U S successful in the world's most important culinary competition, the Boku store. And he realized that until we teach our young culinarians, the most essential, essential basics, we could never be really great. And we would never live up to the potential that the country and our regions and the cuisines and our history and our ingredients and our culture could be. And we will only get to discover how great a culinary nation we are because our young people will become inspired by this. And that's one of the reasons I was excited to have this particular team on because look at how they're teaching you. They're teaching you the way that they were taught. And that's the great legacy of Thomas and his team and his dream. And so now for every food entrepreneur out there, this is like the way we are touched in that legacy, connecting from a Escoffier to the chefs at the Swiss hotel schools, to the restaurateurs who came to this country and who trained at the best, with the best, who begat and became John George and Danielle Balou and John Louis Paladin and Thomas Keller and Chef Jason and his wife, Sarah, and now us. We're part of that lineage. We're part of that legacy by coming and learning at the hands of this master and his team. Chef Jason, I can't thank you enough for teaching us this. What do we do next? Incredible. Well, that was quite the intro. All right. 
unbelievable. I wish that somehow we could have that. We could just have you show up us for every cooking show that we do. I you know what, Jason? Here's the problem. We lost viewers during that. So I'm not sure if it was that. Sarah, are you there? Yes. You might, have, you might have done a better job. Jennifer, I don't know what to happen. I mean, we literally lost about 70,000 70, people during that. Are you, are you, uh... <laughs> That's not true. Hey, Jason, what are we going to cook next? I think they went to the website. <laughs> order, right? That's what they're doing. And so uh, we have our gnocchi here on the tray. We have our sauce done right here. Yeah. We've got our pan, our pot boiling. And so now we're going to go over here and we're going to go ahead and boil this gnocchi for two minutes. And so I like to lift the, all the foil up and just slide all the gnocchi in. And so this is going to go for about two minutes. And we'll take it out and that'll go straight into our sauce here. And then I got a little plate over here. Chef, how do you when a gnocchi is done? You know the gnocchi is done when it starts floating. So once it starts floating, uh, you will know that it's done, it is ready. That is what you're looking for. Gnocchi is essentially just uh, uh, you're binding either the potato or the ricotta in with the flour and the egg. And so your sauce right now, you should that should be seasoned, right? So you have your brown butter, your sage, your truffle salt, your carpaccio, and then your lemon juice. And that creates a very nice, beautiful, round, well-rounded sauce to coat that truffle ricotta gnocchi. So, Jennifer, a healthy gnocchi floats. Yep. Not to be confused with anything else healthy that floats. Okay. And so I'm going to bring my saucepan right over here. And my chef tuition is going off. And I'm going to start pulling these guys out, getting all the water off of them as possible. into our pan and then now you want to toss them very gently right and what we like to tell people is you want every single gnocchi either coated in brown butter or truffle and so now, now i'm tossing this little bit here right and this recipe will literally make six times this amount we always make sure that all these uh experiences plenty of food we'd rather people make it and have so much they have leftovers tomorrow than not have enough food when they cook with us and so now that i got this in the pan i'm going to hit it with an additional dash of that truffle salt and that truffle salt that's 20 percent truffles so it is not you can't really over season with it is there such a thing as too much truffle in a dish? I know some restaurants will sell you truffles by a slice shaved over your dish. Can you have too much? Is this another story of where balance makes the difference? Absolutely. And what we found is it's not necessarily if the dish is balanced, you almost there's obviously too much, but you really can't overload it. But if the dish is not balanced, if there's no acidity, right, if there's, 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 if it's just cream and truffle and butter and cheese, then it really, you'll eat it, but you won't be able to finish it. When it's beautifully balanced, you'll eat it and you'll finish all of it and you'll remember that forever. And so now I got everything coated here and I'm going to come in and pick up all this gnocchi and go right to the middle of the plate. And chef, once the gnocchi are floating, yeah. do, they, do they continue to cook or floating means take them out? Yeah, so once they're floating, that's the perfect time to take them out, get as much water off as possible, and then you can get that into your sauce.
You know, Jennifer, it's been said that a great chef faces her audience. Here we go. Here we go. Let's see what we got. Just bringing it over. Oh, I got to get this out of the way. Okay. Oh, Jennifer, don't tease us. Bring them. Bring it. Here we go. She's got a garnish. She's garnishing the dish. Oh. What do you mean? Oh, did you forget to garnish the dish? <laughs> oh, beautiful. Nice. Wow. Look at this. Jennifer English, Chef Jennifer English, James Beard Award winner. What I'm going to tell you about this dish is it's making me feel welcome. It's making me feel connected. And I have to tell you, this is this is making me feel successful. And it is, it's unbelievably delicious. The softest lemony kiss, but the truffle. It's all about the truffle. Mm. And Jennifer and, doesn't like to eat on camera, by the way. I, so really <laughs> <laughs> I catch her though, Sarah. I catch her taking bites every once in a while. <laughs> Sarah, think, can you send me the recipe in a text format so I can put it in the comments under the show? Uh, yes, give me just a moment. Because you, you sent it, or, or, or comment, you you sent it as a PDF, but that won't work for us. Okay, not a problem. Oh, I had asked for it in a PDF. Sorry, it's my fault. Well, I don't know why you would have done that, Jennifer. Well, because I thought that's what you asked for. Oh, Jennifer. Listen, I, I want to say thank you to this incredible team. And I want to remind people that... The reason we had them on today, yes, this is delicious, but everybody out there in this business is being called upon to reimagine what their world and business looks like. Jason, Sarah, would you guys just tell us what it was like to, to let go of one bar on the trapeze in order to be able to catch the next to get all the way across? Can you can talk we bring about Sarah? Let's, can we bring Sarah in to say hello so everyone knows we're yeah. not just talking to the ghost of Sarah? She's coming around. Here we go. Hey. There she is. Hi. You guys, I'm so excited and, and proud for you. You're incredible in what you're achieving. But I want everybody to know that, that there had to have been moments, even with the pedigree of the French Laundry, even with the success you have, even with your source to the greatest truffles in the world, there was a moment when you're hanging on to the trapeze of success that you've known your whole careers and you've seen the length between you and the future created by the COVID, knowing that you're going to have to either stay hanging on and potentially get stuck or go all the way and let go in order to catch that next opportunity, that next trapeze bar. Talk about what that required as business owners as as culinarians as restaurateurs talk about that because that's a moment we're all going through and we'll have to go through at some point in this i mean i i think it really didn't feel like an option you know in in january we were actually in a position where our company was able to span more than just myself and jason and tyler and now we're responsible you know just like in a restaurant you're responsible for a lot of other people that put their trust in you so it wasn't an option of do this or not. It was, it was like sink or swim. Like we, we really, we had to. Yeah. And so that, that day, essentially, if you remember in San Francisco, San Francisco was the first city to really kind of start closing everything down. And so first we, Trump made his announcement that there's a travel ban on all trade, right. Coming from Europe to America. And that was all of our revenue. And so, we we're able to get in one last shipment of fresh truffles, right? And it was 20 pounds and it was a lot to have on, but we're kind of looking at this as this was like our lifeline. Let's get this in. We'll sell it to the last restaurants that are open mm -hmm. and we'll figure out what to do next. And then we get these truffles in and then the day we get them in, the shelter in place, you know, the emergency alert goes off and everything shuts down in San Francisco. Every single restaurant, the shelter in place happens, right? And then, you know, Shortly after that, the entire world shuts down. So we were a business that was 80% to restaurants, mm -hmm. right? And all of our inventory was perishable, right? On hand and every single restaurant and the world was closed. And, and, and by the way, by the way, truffles are not inexpensive. For you to just have 40 pounds, it may not sound like a lot. You might have a pumpkin that's 40 pounds at Halloween. But when you're talking truffles, you're talking about easily six figures of 
resources going into this. I can only imagine how much you had tied up in that, which would be maybe your whole year's supply. It was, it was all the cash that we had. Yeah, pretty much. It was, it was all the cash that we had. And we had got this global deal with Whole Foods and we we're really ramping up for that. We we're, we we're a little overextended. And so Whole Foods put a pause on everything, mm -hmm. right? So that was supposed to be, you know, our additional growing revenue stream. So they put a pause on everything. Every single restaurant shuts down, right? And that was March uh, 29th, which was a Tuesday. On Wednesday, we got a phone call from the Battery, which is a local club out here, uh, like a, a social club, right? Who, who you had done an in-person cooking class with in the past. Mm -hmm. So they and knew you guys. They, they did know us, yes. So they knew us and they, they, they same thing, right? They were like, what do we do, right? Because they're all their business is members coming in the door. So they're like, hey, would you guys want to do a virtual risotto cooking class, right? And basically we take this phone call. The battery, it's very uh, high-end members, right? Right. And so prominent individuals throughout the community, we take this phone call. We're looking at this. Uh, suitcase of truffles, basically. Suitcase of truffles, right? And we're like, yeah, we would love to do that. And we know your members want the best. What if we put together all the ingredients they need for the truffle risotto? Don't even have to go to the grocery store right now because we know no one wants to. Don't have to go to the grocery store right now. And we'll even include the truffles. And the battery was like, wow, would you guys really do that? And we're like, absolutely, we would do that. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah. That was Wednesday. This launched Thursday morning at 9 a.m. We had, were on the phone with our accountants trying to put our books together. We had made a commitment that we would not furlough anybody. Yeah. And so uh, we made that commitment. We're on the phone with our accountants trying to figure out how to get an SBA loan or get, a or get our money right for the triple P. And we're sitting there and the website just won't stop. Right. And we were sold out in three hours. And I remember I had to run over to Jason because I'm like trying to keep track of our inventory um, at the moment because we kind of just like launched it and we're like, okay, we'll play catch up. And then at that point, I'm like, we got to, we got to cut it off. Like we're, at, we're out of truffles. We had sold 100% sold out of truffles by that, by noon that day. Yeah. And so you, you didn't even have to have that moment looking into the abyss where you had to summon your faith. In this in this opportunity, you just it just it just happened. It was definitely there for about a day. Very real. You know, <laughs> le leading leading up to this, uh, you know, my dad lost his entire business in two thousand eight, and honestly, I felt like it was like the world playing a trick. You know, and then I realized it's not just me. Like we're all in this together, mm -hmm. and we had no idea what to do, and so we kept you know thinking of ideas, thinking of ideas, and this this virtual cooking class you know we had tried something similar and sold like one like one kit and we had we were like is this going to work is it not going to work and essentially what we realized is that people are home people uh want entertainment people want to eat right and people still want that same experience that they are used to and since that first one that we've done uh we're on our 15th every sunday and now thursday friday saturday Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we will have companies, right, are starting the book with us. And so in total, um, we've done two things. One, we have committed ourselves every, that box that you got, every box that we sell like that, the experience box, we donate a meal to a frontline healthcare worker. And then we have also been able to hire 12 uh, chefs and service personnel that were laid off, wow. laid off, no revenue. And then we just uh, actually purchased the first kitchen built out for Top Chef. And so with that, we've donated 5,000 meals and we've cooked with 10,000 individual people. And it's it's just been in, incredible. And I'm just unbelievable, humble. Well, and Jason, um, it sounds like there's no going back. Even if restaurants open again, this, is, this has become a thing that has its own life. Uh, we, we have it's it's probably is it now it's no longer this or that it's got to be this and that yes and we have 250 people that book with us every single week wow. and 
I will do anything for those people. And we're going to keep doing this every week. And what we have found is we started the truffle business and truffles are incredible. But as a chef, you spend so much time bettering your technique to bring value to the experience. And we couldn't do that with truffles. And then we found the products and we kind of could do that, right? But then you spend all this time dealing with logistics and distribution and warehousing. And then with this, you know, right, if this was a live class, we would there would be 300 people, right, showing this dish to the camera that they, that same feeling that you got, they got that, right? And that is something that just is unbelievable. And we've uh, kind of taken the approach We've been a little crazy with it. We literally, everybody has our cell phone numbers. Everybody yeah. has our emails. <laughs> if people can call us for wine notes, recipes. If something doesn't work, they can call us. We talk to everyone. We handle. You know, Jason, I mean, that's there are legendary stories about housewives in the Midwest in the United States looking up James Beard's phone number and calling him when a recipe in one of his books didn't turn out. And there's a legendary story about him talking through a souffle recipe. I'm sure you've heard that. And, yeah. and there's something really powerful and evocative and generous from you about that. But more importantly, I want to talk about how this feels. Because one of the things that happens in a restaurant, Michael, I'm going to use my word. One of the things that happens and the reason we go out is because of something called conviviality. We want to be out together, to break bread together, to share a meal together, to have this experience together. I didn't know that this, what we just did today, could feel like this. This is the first time I've ever done this. And I'm gonna tell you, I am feeling the kind of conviviality that I would feel. It's different, no doubt. But I love that I'm here with you and you, Michael, and that we're here yeah. together. And there's some real joy in the, in the sharing of the together of this piece. I'm so happy that we're here with you, Jennifer, the day after your birthday, and you were able to experience this while I wasn't because I never got my box. So oh, we wanna thank Jason and Sarah, right? We wanna thank the Truffle Shuffle, sf.com, right? We know they're gonna, I mean, these people are, are, you should see the numbers on this, it's blowing up right now. And actually they got higher when Sarah came on, so I'm a little <laughs> wondering what's going on here. <laughs> Well, because she's gorgeous and, and brilliant. This is what we well, like. Oh, you know, you know, so well, are you. Thank you. And if, if anyone wants to participate with us and Michael, of course, just please send me your address and I would be happy to send you a kit coming up for mm -hmm. risotto. We're also doing a <laughs> burger class on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. That'll do. That will do. That will do. Okay, burger. Perfect. Let's, yeah. let's plan on that then. Perfect. And anyone that, Feel free to reach out to myself or Jason. Our, our uh, emails are just Sarah and Jason at Truffle Shuffle SF. And, and if you go on the website, definitely use the code FOODIE15. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Um, we're welcome. We, we really want to like share our community and and definitely this this friendly and, and really inclusive um, just experience, I suppose, we've created. It's been it's been really special. And, and thank you, Sarah. Sarah, I want you to support. So thank you. Just watch backstage when we hang up with you. We get rid of you guys. Just watch what we have to say about you. It's going to be fabulous. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Jennifer, I had to end that because I'm exhausted after all that pasta. Like, you know how you just get tired after you eat a lot of pasta? I got, I got tired watching you guys eat pasta. How was that? Delicious? <laughs> When we start the show and we talk about these people who are our friends in the business, those mm -hmm. are our, those are our friends now. They gave us really, they gave me, and and they may not know it, but they gave me, and I and I've been in this business like you have a long time. Not they as long me, as you. They gave me a powerful gift today. They really wow. did. They really touched me. Yeah, they're very neat, neat people, and I'd like to know more about what they do. I'd like to know more about how we can how we can do our friends, get other our other restaurant owner friends in the business to buy their truffles, right? That would be a neat thing too for us. Or maybe they don't even do that. Maybe they don't even do that. I, we'll, we'll have to see. And you know, we so didn't have, you know what we didn't get the answer for? Which huh? cuisine does truffle better? Well, I told you it was Italian. So France say it's a, or America? I think it's America with the hamburgers. Who said that? Jennifer, I'm going to let you go. Listen, hug your kid. You're a busy, a busy woman. We'll see you tomorrow. 
See you tomorrow.